fusion core comes down on the oh, back oh, side oh. of this. It's going to see some battle cruisers here very soon as the uh, pressure is starting here by the third, but not really too much drones to get. So the laser going to be unscathed for now, but 12 Zerglings on the way. So that BC yeah, is on the way, and he's got the third command center building on yeah. the ramp. And with the gas being taken, it looks like we're going to see him be playing some good old Mecarino for this first map. Yeah, going to be a very nice style from Euthermal going up again, and it's going to be matching up very nicely against the tech that Laser has available right now. First Roaches starting to come out on the field. And, you know, it will be nice to help help deal with the uh, the Hellions, but not really going to have much of a use once that first Battlecruiser starts making its presence felt. And just focus down drones, because yep. there really shouldn't be a scenario where he can actually kill the BC. I would just walk in, target down like seven or eight drones. Yeah, just, just fly off. So he walk, flies in, kills five drones. He's going to pull back. That's going to get the attention of the Queens. And what's really nice is that Battlecruiser saw that the lair was morphing. So he knows 100% there's no Spire on the way. Um, the build time of the Spire is the same as the cooldown for tactical jump. So he is guaranteed to be able to jump out before air units could ever be on the field. And that also means he doesn't have to worry about Hydras or Speed Roaches. It's just slow Lings and Roaches. So he's going to build some Hellions and Cyclones back home. Gets Mag Field, starts up Yamato. And I, I love this setup. Battlecruiser, Hellion, Cyclone is a really fun, extremely powerful army composition. The roaches do kind of just say, nope, to the Hellions. You're going to have a really hard time making something happen. And with this many queens, with this many roaches, and the fact that he's, that speed upgrade is coming in, I love this. Just focus down the drones. The really big kicker that you need to be cautious about is when you skip siege tanks doing a build like this, it's really nice because tanks are expensive. They build really slowly. But... If your opponent says, screw it, I'm just going to throw a thousand roaches at you, they will be able to kill the Hellions. They definitely will be able to kill the Cyclones because there's not enough so of sick. them. Builds a giant creep highway with all these overlords. I feel like this, some someone from Blizzard is like, this is the cinematic <laughs> thing we envisioned like in 2010 when we added this in. So there's a huge attack. <laughs> that, that means the Queens with a ton of anti-air are going to push in as well. So a laser going for a huge Roach Ravager Queen. Yep. For all intents and purposes, it's an all-in. He's looking to end the game right here, right now. And Euthermal just may not have enough to stop this. Yeah, the Bile's coming in huge here. The two battle crews on the right-hand side doing all they can. The transfusers are so clutch on those queens on the left-hand side. Bile's still trying to hunt down these slippery battle cruisers. The first SCVs start to fall here. Still no pull coming through. Euthermal trying to hold on, but now that natural base completely overrun and laser in great position here. Yeah, the, the hard part, those Ravagers, of course, even with the Biles, they're still going to have that auto attack against the ground. So the SCVs, when they get pulled to repair, if, if they ever do get pulled to repair, they're still going to have a really hard time with this because those queens have the transfuses that we were talking about, the natural command center. He should be able to dunk that with Biles since he thermal's not flying it away. His third mineral line was destroyed. He does finally have some tanks on the way with another BC. And the siege tanks here are going to be really nice. Another battle cruiser finishes. I'm still sweating that one of them is... Uh, Pull some to repair, for God's sake, man. <laughs> for God's sake, repair your damn battle cruisers. Please, they're getting lower and lower here as the Queens continue their pressure. Now it's just down to half a mining base, really, still at that main. And so weird. So he finally does start a Spire. This is this is the biggest weakness of uh, BC openings with lots of Hellions, is that you do want, you want to skip tanks. If you can get away with skipping tanks, this build becomes disgusting because then you get then you're harassing with PCs, you're harassing with cyclones, you're harassing with Hellions. He's got a creep tumor in his natural though now. And all the tanks Ooh. on the low ground gonna get dunked. Yeah, great pickups here for a laser, and all he has to do now is just stay alive. Even putting creep tumors down on that creep highway he set up earlier. And really just has to buy time for that spire here, right? I mean the name of the game for you, Thermal is gonna be trying to equalize this economy you, through battle cruiser crash. Thermal is broke. If yeah. Todd were here, he'd be talking to us about like, you know, ramen or Campbell's or chicken noodle, all sorts of stuff. Whoa. Um, he's just gonna YOLO it because there's really nothing else he can do. The spire is here! He kills the spire, which that's that's a that's an amazing play. This that's could be the move that buys him a new lease on life. Ooh. Um, one of the BCs does get killed. The Spore Crawler gets repositioned, but He's if he gets it. rid of all of the Queens, then there is really a lot he can do. I mean, there's Overlords yeah. here that he can kill. He can cut out a lot of this. A Laser's only move is to send all of his ground units back on the attack. Can wow. Euthermal defend his main with what is at home is my only question now. And yeah, he's barely extended himself even into his natural because he's 
kind of expecting this to happen. Just don't lose that command center, bro. Yeah, coming in, getting on fire now. Gonna have to pull some SVs to repair it at some point. Meanwhile, the battle cruiser is still pressuring here and will take down that hatchery. So really starting to restrict the larva available to a laser on the other side. Million dollar question, where's the spire? Oh, it's in that main. He's gonna be able to deny this one too. Focuses down the support because he's like, look, there's no queens here to transfuse, so just get rid of it. Remove that variable from the so equation. Sad. Goodbye, Spire. Another one starts up by the third base, but already this has just turned devastating. Killing the lair, I mean, I think that's a fantastic play. I'd almost, you don't want to mule your main in this situation, or even the natural, really. Mm -hmm. So I, he's got scans. I'd like to see him scan the third base, just look for the Spire. Teleport onto it if you can. There's more spores being built on it, but kill the lair, teleport to the third, kill the Spire. And that actually could be game. There shouldn't be anything he can do there. Finish that layer, please, for the love yeah, of God. Please. Okay, does finish it. Takes out that extra queen as well. There the is. They're looking for a spire. Yeah, there's only two queens on the map right now in terms of anti air, relying solely on those spores until that spire is finished. Like oh. you said, there it is. Yeah, so that one just finished. He teleports it in, but he sees that spire. The only way that you thermal can win this game, he has to deny that spire. I would just tell all the BCs to Yamato it. I, I would legit YOLO on it. Um, he kills one of the spores before that. Well, he's he going for this hatch, but do you not see it? Do you not see Spire? No. Once that oh, finishes, goodness. he's going to build a lot of corruptors. And yeah. This game will end. So. Yeah, that is the win condition, and now it'll be done. He'll be able to get him in queue, regardless if it dies or not. Now. Does he have the larva though? Does he actually have larva? He yeah, he does. 15. Yeah. He's building mutas. Uh. Okay. I mean, a counterattack is not the worst play, but battle cruisers are very good against mutalisks. And yeah. four of them, I guess because he hasn't prepared, that's probably the real, that's the only reason I, I think the mutas will work. Yeah, not repairing here. Make it over the. He's gonna teleport. He's gonna teleport home and tell every SCV to repair. This is his only chance of this. But now he sees Ooh. mutas. Yeah, and even catches a few of them on the spawn there. That's very nice. That's Especially as these banks start to get lower and lower with the economies getting so low right now with so many hatcheries getting killed. I mean, in only this, one hatchery. In this scenario, Ooh. Corruptors would have done so much. Like, I get that Corruptor, like, people are like, well, Corruptor can only do so much, but he could also just Caustic Spray back on the other side of the map, too. Like, the mutas have a lot of you more utility in a way, but Corruptors would make the BCs not even a thing anymore, but it's like now you just repair them. Battle cruisers, he can defend the mutas with this, is I guess more so the issue now. Yeah, and you know, now we have Euthermal with two mining bases, you know, starting to get his somewhat of an economy going again. And these battle cruisers still, there's not really much of an answer, right? I mean, those mutas, like you were saying, still don't do great. And now these roaches coming in, trading out against this, this mech on the ground, but losing quite a few of them still. Not yeah. a ton of larva to fall it's back on. It's not fun to build. It's not fun to build corruptors. I'll say that much. But yeah, mutas were never gonna be. There's a fusion core. Nice. All right. So. This is one of those maps where liberator range is really good too. But probably be. Think about battle cruisers. Like I like I was saying in the the last map. If your opponent were to open spire or nidus, mm -hmm. it destroys banshee openings. It wrecks a lot of arm armory openings or worthless against fast mutas or something like that. Right. But the battle cruiser rush is just. It's not bad against anything other than a very specific timing that hits right before it would come out. But that's a very difficult thing to do. Most of us cannot re uh, understand the mystical arts, so I do not expect him to lose the BC for nothing um, as it has finished. And it's in the natural expansion. It did run the Hellions towards the third at the same time. You still have to commit to all sorts of other things. Kills a queen. Very nice pickup. And pick six, seven, almost seven drones. Wow. Beautifully and Beautifully done. Yeah, fantastic start here for you, Thermal. Those, that queen count so crucial for a laser right now in the interim before the layer finishes, right? Has no access other than spore crawlers, you know, to any other form of AOE. The third base is going to be able to come down now for uh, you, Thermal, and a laser is not really going to be positioned to, pu to punish it right now. He's going to poke in, grab another drone or two. Now, one thing you, Thermal, doesn't have knowledge of is the layer timing. It is being built in the main, but it's in his favor. The lair is extremely late. And when you BC rush, the later the lair, the happier you are. There Absolutely. is nothing the Zerg can do against the BC rush until that lair is done. If they want to build a dozen spores, great. You've burned, that's the same thing as killing all of those drones. And those spores are probably not going to kill the BC anyway. They're just there as a deterrent. You're almost always going to be able to teleport out or find a way around it. So he teleports the second BC in north of the main. And this is really nice. He's going to see that the lair is now done. But it knows, there's still no tech that has started. So he might be able to see it in the main if it gets built here or if it ends up getting built in the natural. But as I stated, even if you were to start a spire right now, 
the teleport cooldown is the same as the build time. So he will be able to get out no matter what. Uh-oh. Oh. When you're dummy thick trying to hide behind the Zerg main. <laughs> now, the real question is, will it take 71 seconds for a queen to kill, one queen to kill a battle cruiser? I feel like it takes longer, right? I mean, this is... I think he's going to kill that BC. It does feel... It's, it's looking that way. I honestly didn't know that you could do this, but now I do. <laughs> and... Um, Down it goes. That's... That's pretty big. Lucky that's yeah. what look like. Terrifying, I would imagine. Yeah. As the uh, battle cruiser just lurking around here. Oh, this is great by. though. Burning a fungal on Hellions. That is so good. That's what you you would love to take take out the Zerg energy here. And this is the real strength of Hellion Cyclone. Is it's just this constant pressure from so many spots. That one fungal hits Hellions. The old, like the doomsday scenario is that a big fungal lands on all your cyclones, and then mm -hmm. you're just dead. Now he's building tanks because he's thinking about the roaches and the ravagers and the infestors. But that BC. I don't think he saw. Oh my goodness. Ooh, so many really investors. Bad. A lot of biles are going to land on the cyclones. I don't yeah. think he saw the greater spire, and that does make me nervous too. Yeah. You can continue to produce things that aren't going to be much much of a help at all against these brood lords. We already have corruptors out on the map. Um, yeah, I'm worried for you, Thermal. You know, if he doesn't if he doesn't recognize that uh, that brood lord potential coming out here BC any is second done. now. The BC is done, so actually doesn't really need the corruptors at all anymore, which suddenly does matter. So he's actually, this is the Ooh. best thing for, for you, Thermal, that could have happened, is a laser runs a lot of his units into these tanks. The more that these tanks can fight before broods come out, the better. Five are on the way right now. This is his window. This is his window to do stuff with tanks. What he needs to get next is, uh, he needs to start Liberator range, and he needs to start building Thors. Like, yeah, going for another run by as the pressure continues up here on the top side. The farther forward he can be pressuring without losing this army is going to be the better. Keep those brood lords at home and away from his mineral lines as more workers continue to get barbecued here. Down to 70 now. Uh, but the main force for thermal gets forced back. Those first four Thors, like you said, on the way. Yep, the Thors are amazing versus brood lords. And one of the things that we did not get to see yet is uh, that fungal, or excuse me, the neural parasite. He did research it. But that's going to be very crucial for dealing with the Thors, too. It's a whole lot of synergy required. You want your tanks and your Hellbats to keep the Infestors off your Thors. And the Thors themselves, they dunk on Broodlords. Like, there is not even a, it is not even a difficult fight. So it really just comes down to making sure that the utility for the Zerg doesn't neutralize his Tier 3. Yeah, going to have to be very conscious with his army positioning and movement as a bunch of spine crawlers are going to be coming down here at this base, really tired of these runbys. And he's not going to take it anymore, but here comes the fight a little bit too soon. Ooh, I like man. this, though. He sees one of those tanks they sent for this little attack. He's, you know, you don't need the tanks, so he's like, I'm just going to use them to harass now. And he did get the Thors, so he's moving out once again with his army on the north side. Do you see a Neural Parasite on some unseaged tanks? Ooh, that great is really not going to do a whole lot, but yeah, good fungal, good bile. Tanks still continuing to pressure. The Lord's caught out of position, by the way, because they they got uh, they got F2 fat fingered onto that southeast base, and oh man, the Lords are slow. But there's a lot of them. Are there enough Thors to actually go through this? Is going to be a big question. You do not want the siege tanks this killing one. Thors. Yeah, one of those Brood Lords are already getting taken out at the start of this. I think he could A-move through this. I yeah, think, yeah. Those Infestors are going to die really fast. And it's funny, like, you should A-move, because then the tanks are just going to kill the Broodlings as they pop up. And the Thors, they have more range and move faster than Brood Lords. GG, Thermal takes it 2-0. Beautifully done.